I'm going to tell you today about a new technology that allows orthopedic surgeons to regrow a rotator cuff and thicken it up for the first time ever. Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Godding. I'm a practicing orthopedic surgeon, and if you know my channel, you know I'm an advocate for the carnivore diet. So the title of this video, Healing Your Rotator Cuff with Beef, is a little tongue-in-cheek, but it's actually pretty much true. There's a new technology called the Regen and 10 patch. This patch is made of purified cow Achilles tendon, and this patch is placed onto the rotator cuff surgically and allows us for the first time to regrow the rotator cuff, to thicken it up. It's a groundbreaking technology. I've had it done on my own shoulder, and it's been an absolute transformation for me and for hundreds of my patients. So first, I'll tell you my story quickly about my shoulder, and then I'll tell you more about the rotator cuff, and I'll tell you about the Regenitin patch. We'll go over the history of rotator cuff treatments and how we got to where we are and how the Regenitin patch has revolutionized the treatment of rotator cuff tears. So my shoulder, I originally had shoulder surgery in 2004 when I was doing my shoulder fellowships down in Australia. I was doing a lot of surfing at the time and my shoulder was very sore. I had a little bit of a tiny partial rotator cuff tear, but not even really that much. I was mostly impinging. And that's when the rotator cuff touches the bottom of the acromion bone, which is part of the shoulder blade under which the rotator cuff runs. Now, at the time, the surgeon that I was doing my fellowship with, he did what's called a subacromial decompression, and he shaved the bone off uh, a little bit to give it a little bit more room, and that worked very well for about 16 years. And then I started having a lot more pain, and then I started having even more pain. And I got to the point where I couldn't do one single push-up due to the pain in my shoulder. This was three years ago, almost to the day. <laughs> So I had what was called the Regenitin patch placed on my shoulder. And because I had a partial rotator cuff tear, here's a picture of my MRI. This is the partial tear. Okay, so this is the supraspinatus tendon coming over. This is the humeral head. This is the, the socket part. This is the ball part. The humeral head is the ball. The glenoid is the socket. The supraspinatus is the tendon that you see there. And I had a little bit of a tear. Now, the Regenitin patch goes on top of the tear and essentially fuses with it and thickens it up. And so this is just a groundbreaking technology. And it's just absolutely been life altering for me. I work out hard all the time. Uh, I, I push my shoulders in the gym um, as much as I can within the, the limits of what I think is safe, but I do lots of push-ups. I do lots of pull-ups. Um, I, I, I work out really hard on my shoulder. I don't do military or incline presses because I think those are really damaging for the shoulder, but that's the subject of another video. So the Regenitin patch is a patch that is made from the Achilles tendon of a cow. It's type one collagen, which is the type of collagen that is the same as tendons in your body. Tendons attach muscles to bones. The rotator cuff are the four tendons that primarily rotate the shoulder, the ball part of the shoulder around in the socket, like this. Now, the, the muscles that you can feel, this is the deltoid and there's other muscles, the pec in the front and the, the lats in the back that move the the shoulder around but the primary rotators deep down are called the rotator cuff and when that gets damaged you have a lot of pain a lot of loss of function and a lot of loss of strength so typically rotator cuff tears occur in the supraspinatus the top tendon of the rotator cuff and they typically tear at the footprint which is where the tendon attaches to the bone and in a large tear what we do is we drill some holes in the bone and we pull the tendon over and we tack the tendon down where it is on the bone and sometimes we'll rough the bone up a little bit to make sure that it, it grows in solidly. And for a small tear in a good solid tendon, otherwise good solid tendon, that's a, still a very good operation. Where it gets more difficult is where you have a large tear, a tear that typically has very poor tendon quality around it. 
And even if you tack it down, um, it used to be that you would leave the operating room looking at, at what you had done. You say, man, the repair looked good, but the quality of the tissue was so bad. So that was one challenge, the very large rotator cuff tear. Another challenge was the very small rotator cuff tear that wasn't uh, all the way through the tendon. We call this a partial thickness tear. And what we used to do is we would complete this tear, we would cut through it and tack it down, and then you would again have your six weeks in a sling. And then you would do your rehab. The Regenitend changed both of those things completely. So now we'll go ahead and start with what I had, which is the partial thickness rotator cuff tear. So instead of completing the tear, we place the Regenitend patch, again, which is made of that type one collagen. We surgically, we go in and we tack it down on top of the cuff where the cuff has the partial tear. And over time, it literally becomes new tendon. There's been studies, including ultrasounds, which show what's called revascularization of that area and that show that there's there's new MRIs and second look arthroscopies all these things have shown that there's good quality tendon it, it some of the arthroscopic pictures you can hardly believe when it's a, a relook into it now these don't happen very often because there's not usually a reason to put a scope back in uh, once the rotator cuff is healed but sometimes for whatever reason surgeons have done it and they've published these pictures and the pictures show what looks to be a completely undamaged tendon. You see the before and after, it looks like a damaged tendon and an undamaged tendon. So this really does grow in and become new usable tendon. It essentially refreshes your tendon. It thickens it up. So it's, it's really amazing that way. This, this use case for it, the first use case I'm talking about, which is the partial thickness rotator cuff, the thing that might be the most exciting for patients is that instead of six weeks in a sling, you only spend 48 hours in a sling. I had my rotator cuff regen and patch done on a Friday. And 10 days later, I was back in the operating room doing small cases. And a couple weeks after that, I was back in the operating room doing large cases, including swinging hammers and joint replacements and things like that. It's just, it's a game changer. So the other use case is when you have a large rotator cuff tear. And, and again, like I said, you pull the tissue down, but you're just not happy. Well, in that case, you can put the Regenitent on top of that. And there have been published studies that show that there's a dramatically reduced rate of re-tear with a rotator cuff repair if you use the Regenitent patch. So the Regenitent has absolutely been a game changer. It changed my life. It changed my practice. Of course, all of the patients that I've done have had wonderful success. Of course, there's always a few exceptions, so let's not say all, but 90 plus percent of the patients that I've done with this have had tremendous success and been very happy. There have been a few where it just, for whatever reason, like anything else, didn't work and I had to go back and do the old cut the tendon and tack it down, but nothing's 100% in life. Uh, it just isn't. But this Regen and Ten patch has, has totally changed the way I approach shoulder surgery. I now am using it in the total shoulders that I do. A total shoulder is a shoulder replacement, and we do that when you have arthritis. And that's the breakdown of the cartilage on both sides of the joint, both the ball side and the socket side. Well, I'm now using the Regenitin patch on top of my total shoulder replacements in order to thicken up the cuff because most people that have shoulder arthritis are gonna have a rotator cuff that's at least got some significant partial thickness tears. So. I just wanted to talk about this exciting new technology and tell you that that there are in medicine new technologies coming along all the time and some of them are dependent on animal tissue. Okay, thanks for watching so far. I actually do not have access to where I typically record. I'm in the middle of editing. It's Saturday night. This has to go out on Sunday. Please forgive the end here. Um, I would have re redone the whole thing, but I just don't have access, and then the algorithm will kill me if I don't upload every week. So anyway, if you enjoyed it, I appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy the channel. I promise my videos don't end like this typically, but thanks for watching.